All right, okay, from Very Professional Dodo. We all know DLSS is excellent as it is, but during the DLSS 4 presentation, there were several times where I wondered whether what I was seeing was real. Not in a wow, this looks insane way, but more of a, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this is real detail or just a really convincing approximation of what it should be. For this reason, there is one test I would really like you guys to do when reviewing DLSS 4. Could you do a 16K natively rendered screenshot and then compare it against a 4K image using DLSS 4 performance? And if the two images happen to be quite different, do you personally believe that artist intent matters more than getting a good approximation, or rather, more than getting a good enough approximation of detail at improved frame rates? What do you make of this question, Alex? I think it's an interesting one just because um, it is actually talking about something that I think is, what is the phrase like? I can't think of the phrase at this late hour, but basically there's a certain level of like impossibility that's being described here. And I feel like um, if we were to, to try and compare things to a 16K, what is approximate ground truth, we are actually not doing that um, because DLSS is not saying this is ground truth. I don't think that's trying to say that it is ground truth. It's trying to give us like um, a better approximation, uh, a better quality for our subjective senses. And um, you have to go into that with a certain level of like subjective description. And if you start comparing to a 16K drawn truth, which is which could produce interesting comparison, um, it's not something we've done ever before for any other thing ever. And it's actually holding it up to a mirror that is a little ridiculous. Um, like we've never done that before. No one's ever done that for anything really before other than for technical papers when trying to describe uh, their approach, like this, their simplification approach versus ground truth. And it's more like figuring out what you can try and do in the same frame time budget that's more interesting. Yeah. I always feel like from the user perspective, um, it could be enlightening to a degree, but it's also almost impossible to capture because do you capture it with TAA? No, you shouldn't then. No, no cause that's a, that's a, it's another approximation. So you would have to capture it raw and then what raw with no AA and then downsample it or like it's, I tried to do this for my TAA video to show some, the way things look. And even then it was a bit wishy-washy. Uh, I think the idea is kind of interesting, but I think it's also kind of missing the point of image reconstruction right. um, in a, as a real-time application. Yeah, yeah, that's always important to consider when people start banding about like CG and stuff like this, or like the incredibly detailed kinds of light interactions that you can get with like an offline path tracer working for hours and hours and very complex imagery. Uh, Getting that kind of stuff in games requires different kinds of approaches because you're never going to get that level of per frame 16K fidelity in this case. Yeah. Uh, in a game, I mean, 16K is an insane amount of pixels. Uh, so you need to be somewhat realistic and understand that approaches that work for offline um, are not necessarily appropriate for real time. And even 16K is uh, an absurdity for offline. So perhaps we should just leave it at yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> we should be really concerned about like perceptual rendering. Thank you.